over again, back with a new video. Um, a previous, in the previous video, I talked about uh, what I feel to be the six things that a person needs. I talked about three of those things, uh, food, water, and shelter. Uh, in this video, I'll be discussing fire, defense, and communication. Now, fire. This is a Zippo lighter I got a couple years back at uh, Atlantic City. Keep that I keep that lighter with me just about everywhere I go because you know it's important to have a means of you know, lighting your way and keeping yourself warm. Now uh, you may be wondering how, you know, how I keep myself warm with a Zippo lighter. Well, build a fire. Now, I can build a fire. Um, the body needs you know the body needs warmth. Uh, it goes it actually goes in part with protecting yourself from the elements. You actually kind of take an aspect of one of the elements. And use it to your advantage, which is fire. Uh, and fire can encompass many different things. You know, for one thing, heating. Uh, you want to keep your body warm during uh, during extreme cold temperatures. Right now in South Carolina, the temperature has dropped considerably. Uh, I think when I got home from work, uh, you know, late, real late last night, it was close to I think like 35 degrees, uh, Columbia, South Carolina. And so, you know, a guy in the house would keep it at 70. It's always good to have a means of keeping yourself warm. You don't want your body to get too cold uh, with your you know, hypothermia could result. And you know, that would be good. So have a means of keeping yourself warm, whether it be through building a fire, if you you know, if you look if you're if you're you know you have no choice but to be outside. Or, you know, you have like a you know, this goes through you know, during times of being good or bad, you have you know, like a Mr. Heater. Propane power heater or uh, you know, with adequate ventilation, you know you can move up a section of the house where you can have you and your buddies and your family, you know, huddle around and keep more, you know, keep help keep each other warm. So fire, you know, fire is good in that, in that instance. Also, uh, I know in the UK they call a flashlight a torch. Well, because it essentially is, so it is a torch. Uh, having a flashlight is important because you know in the case of power outages. You want to be able to see what's in front of you, uh, obviously. Um, you know, having a good flashlight, something you know, that produces a good amount of light. You know, sometimes you know, the smaller the better as far as the size of the flashlight goes. Uh, some people have, you know, as I've seen, um, the big mag lights that sell. You know, that, that some cops have, some security officers have, and you know, you see some of the small ones. You know, when I mean, you go holding your hand, and you just push a button, and you can hold like this, shine a light on something. It's always good to see, you know, be able to illuminate, illuminate the situation. Um, if, you know, if you can't, if you don't have, no, you don't have access to a flashlight, there's always candles. Uh, candles have been around for centuries. I don't see them ever going away anytime soon. So it's always good to ca ca capitalize on it. Have yourself a couple, have yourself a couple of candles at, on hand. Oil lanterns, uh, those, are, those, those could be very useful uh, you know, in light up situation. With that comes the, with all those things comes the build, comes maintenance. You know, you have to maintain you know, your heating elements in your house in order to, make, to keep yourself warm, so that they work during the time of emergency. Also, with flashlights, have extra batteries at hand. Uh, have extra bulbs at hand because bulbs do go out, as, as well as batteries going dead. Uh, one, so, a couple flashlights I have, I have hand crank flashlights. Um, you know. Those are not really much maintenance uh, needed with those. Maybe just a bulb that needs to be maybe a replacement bulb, but that's about it. Um, with lantern, with oil lanterns, I can make sure you have enough you know, oil for the lantern. Uh, replacement wicks. Uh, with candles, if you make your own candles, have you know, replacement wax or tallow, what have you, and also have uh, extra wicks at hand, so you'll be able to produce more candles when the ones that are pre-made, you know, they run out of wax. So that's that aspect on fire. Now defense, which I mean that's that's a big that's a big, that's a personal favorite of mine. Uh, you notice my videos, I'm always doing gun videos or I've done reloading videos, uh, that's some repair videos. Uh, this is one of my means of defense. Uh, it's, a, it's a Winchester 1897 uh, takedown shotgun. This is a riot. I, t I decided to keep mine a riot model. Uh, I sold the heat shield and bayonet lug and 
So now you want to keep it like this. I prefer it like this. You know, it's easier to take apart uh, without having to, you know, you know, use a screwdriver to take off the bayonet that long. But what I'm getting to is I'm getting to firearms. Um, firearms, you know, the, uh, is one form of defense. But the fin and the, on the topic of defense itself, why defense? Well, if you have all these things, you know, you have your you have your clean water, you have your your well-stocked food, you have your shelter, you, know, you have your heating. It means nothing if you uh, if you are, if you don't have the means of defending it. Uh, you know the elements, whether it be animals, they may try to take your food or you know, try to get into your water, try to get into your shelter, or uh, other people. Because uh, even during times of you know things are relatively okay as of right now, um, you know people still you know, people steal things, you know people you know rape, people murder. Um, and you need to be able to defend yourself against that. Um, I see, uh, uh, I see no reason why a person wouldn't want to defend themselves. Maybe if they don't see themselves as being around, being around very longer. Or, I don't know. It kind of escapes me. But if you have these things, you know, true water, shelter, and warmth, have your have your means of protection. Um, I go with a firearm. Uh, that's that's some, that's something I'm skilled at. My skill can always be better, as with everyone, but it's a tool that I it's a tool that I've taken up um, because you know because of my personal interests. I like I like working on firearms, I like shooting. It's fun, you know. Whether you're plinking with 22s, clay pigeon shooting, you know, going at the range, you know, busting off a couple of caps <laughs> with 45 ACP, it's fun. And I decided to incorporate that in my defense and on my side of the fence when it comes to prepping. Um, also, it's, what's good is be from, you know, I have guns that work. You know, it's not, it, doesn't serve, it, doesn't serve you any, it doesn't serve you very good to have a firearm that you don't know how, that you don't know how it works. Um, you don't know how to service it, you don't know how to maintain it, you don't know how to clean it, fuel strip it, all that, other, all that stuff. You need to be able to know how to do these things. And that goes with anything. That goes, with, that goes for maintenance with just about anything you have. You know, mending clothes, Cleaning, you know, cleaning water, storing food, maintaining your firearms because you want them to work, especially during times when you need them. Uh, I personally don't ever want to have to, you know, I hate to be in a situation where you know, I'd have to use you know, my, my Winchester or my 1911 and a situation where I have to defend myself or others and my property. But I'm not naive to how the world works. There are dangerous people out there. There are evil people out there, um, and evil shouldn't evil should never triumph over good. So. While there will always be evil people out there who use any means necessary to do evil acts, there should be people, uh, good people, with similar tools, the same tools, even better tools, to resist against it. Um, well, along with firearms, well, uh, consider ammunition. I know people are trying to get ammo nowadays. In a time when you know it's people are buying them up, people are buying them left and right. Uh, one of the things I, one of the skills of I. Uh, Skills I've developed, uh, I've started. I began. I began reloading about two years ago, and be able to create my own my own stock of my own stock of uh, ammunition for my shotguns and for uh, my 45 ACP. I haven't had anything yet for 357 Magnum or uh, 223 or 3030, uh, but you know, hopefully I'll be able to provide for those in the future. Also, consider different types of ammo. You know, there's you know there's FMJs and there's um, or hollow points. You know, each each round has its own application that, that you have to consider. You know, with shotguns, there's birdshot, there's buckshot, and there's slugs. Again, you have to consider the consider the applications that you decide to use those for. Um, the rifles, there, there's F and J's, there's hollow points, soft you know, soft lead nose. Consider what you're going to use them for. Um, you know, I keep my shotgun loaded with double lot buck. Uh, I have some other you know some other um, so I didn't touch a shot at hand, but that's what I'm comfortable with using with my riot shotgun. Some people use knives. I have one of my friends, uh, he's really into using knives. That's more of his thing. And um, there's always if you're gonna use an edge edge weapon as a defensive tool, you know, it's good to have good to have a, uh, a practice. You know, you are close you the chance that you'll be closer to close to what you're gonna use it against. Uh, learn how to maintain it, you know, know how to keep an edge on the on the blade. You know how to keep your blades clean. You know how to store them. Uh, how to keep them on you if if, if need be. Uh, you know, 
There are those some people who uh, are not very comfortable with having you know having to use lethal force against a person. Uh, there are non-lethal options. You know, there's you know beanbag rounds, uh, rubber buckshot shotguns. There's you know, rubber bullets for handguns. Uh, you know, there's stun guns, batons. But just consider, but uh, for those who don't like to use lethal force, uh, I'd like you to consider cons consider the fact that. As well, or rather, the possibility that whoever you're using it, whoever you're using it against, if you mean to defend your life or someone else's life or you know, your property, you have to remember that they're gonna they're gonna try to meet you with greater force than what you're gonna than what you're gonna throw out. So I understand, you know, the I understand the concern for not wanting to take a human take another life, but also understand that they may see you, they may see your life as nothing but an obstacle between them and whatever you have. So always keep that in mind and, and at least have something, at least have a, a lethal means of force as a backup. So you know, that's my, um, that's my talk on, uh, on the side of the fence. And next is communication. Uh, why communication? Well, you need information. You need to be able to talk with other people. You need to be able to gather information about, you know, certain situations. Um, me, I've been, you know, looking at the news, been talking to friends, you know, talking to my neighbors, you know, seeing how things are going. And it help, it's good to stay well informed, not just informed, but well informed because you, know, you may get information that conflicts with one another and it may, it may you know, muddy, it may, it may cloud your, it may cloud your judgment when you're in pursuit of the truth. So you want to make sure that you gather as much information as you can, you know, decipher it, and be able to make an assessment as to what's, you know, what's really going on, you know, going by what's, by what you know already and what's presented in front of you. So with communication, there's you no, know, there's word of mouth. Um, I don't have, uh, I don't have a radio, and I have a ham radio, but I do like to go out and talk to people out that are around my area, talk to people at work, talk to people, um, you know, my neighbors, get to know the people I live around. You know, get to know people you know on YouTube. YouTube is a form of communication. Uh, you know, getting different tips from other preppers, uh, of the survivalists. You know, even though, you know, just uh, just uh, just general just general overview of getting getting to know other people. That way, I can gather information about um, about the things that are at, about the issue, about the situations at hand. Uh, radios are great investments. Uh, people get ham radios. You know, broadcast to sort of back and forth to one another. Um, some people who don't have a ham radio license, they may have a receiver. They can just receive information, which is also good. Um, you know, you keep that radio on. If something comes up, you know, you tune into it. So you, you know, tune into it so you get the information, so uh, the no so you know how to better calculate your next move. Whether that move may be on food, you know, gathering food, collecting water, uh, storing up ammo, uh, finding finding fuel for warmth. Uh, communication can be a, communication can be a, a valuable tool at your disposal. Uh, there's also, you know, getting, you know, also like I said before, getting to know the people around you. you know, I have neighbors across the street that we check in on each other from time to time. You know, I talk to my friends in the house. I you know, communicate with my family, you know, um, within the state and outside the state. Uh, I remember during Hurricane Sandy, there were some people, you know, that they were just trying, they were, they were to their phones and make sure that their family, make sure that their family were, their friends and family back up north were okay, and, this, and that's understandable. I mean, we have concern for others, so we try to try to keep in touch. It's always a good thing. You also just you know gather information about the situation, and that's good. Even you know, I guess Hurricane Sandy would be like a kind of a you know SSTF situation. Well, actually, it was a SSTF situation. I mean, there, there were people who got hurt, people uh, people lost their property. You know, there was a lot of damage, so it may not be nationwide, but that region did suffer some. Uh, but even with, by going back to the things, you know, being, you know, you want to do these things when things are relatively stable. Uh, that way, when things, if, if and when things become unstable, you can go back to, you know, go back to remember what you, what you were doing in the before, and you know, you can know who you can talk to about certain things, uh, know how, you, know how you have, know that you have different different means of gathering information to to help assess the situation. So there you have it. Uh, those are the two videos that 
you know, the two videos I made, you know, discussing water, food, shelter, fire, defense, and communication. Uh, I believe those things are essential to everyone, whether it be the, you know, whether it be like a, a, a prepper or just someone who's living, someone who's living day to day. But it's always good to have those six things provided for. It makes life a lot more easier, especially during times of emergencies. But that's my video. I'm Edward Jones, and thank you for watching.